This segment is going to discuss the basics of the bigger hammer action that's described in Chapter 10. It is not going to be discussing the options that are available in the options window of the PPW panel. That's going to be discussed in a different video. This is just going to be going over what the purpose of the action is and what the basic controls are. So I'm going to start with something that is comparatively rare, which is something that is classically oriented for this kind of uh, action. Here we have a picture of a glacier in Canada, and this is a picture where unless we get really good highlight detail, the picture is going to be a failure. So here we live and die by what happens in the highlights. That's unusual, probably not more than 10 or 15 percent of pictures are like that. And this is the kind of image that just screams out that we want the bigger hammer, which is a big way of enhancing highlights. So we click the bigger hammer action, and we get this. It's, uh, it's quite an enormous effect. There's, uh, you see that there are four layers here, but really only one of them is changing the picture. And that's this overlay layer here. By default, it's an inverted blurred copy of the red channel. Uh, we're not going to discuss that in this video as to how it, why we're choosing that one as opposed to anything else. This is what you get by default. If you turn this layer off, you're back to the original. Turn it back on and you have the enhanced version. If this were to live by itself, it would also have just as strong of an effect in the shadows. Usually, that's not desirable. Sometimes it is. But usually, it's not desirable. So we have this darkening layer here. It's a copy of the original set in dark and darker color mode with an opacity of 50%. And the idea is to cut down on what's happening in the shadows. Without it, we get something like this. And now the effect of the layer is to bring the original from here to there. Um, the way I look at this picture, I'm happy with what's going on in the snow and ice, but I think it's excessive what's going on in the, um, in the brown uh, rocky area. So we use the darkening layer at 50% opacity, which cuts in half what's going on in the shadows. We could, if we want to, um, bring it out to 100% opacity, and now it's doing nothing really to the shadows, but it's only enhancing the ice. Up to you. You can set this thing to uh, whatever you want to, or discard it altogether, and by default, it's 50%. Okay, so there's before, there's after. You'll notice that there's another layer up here that we're not, that's not active. We'll talk about that, that one later. That's as a defensive mechanism against what sometimes happens with this action, but is not happening here, and that is um, offensive haloing, usually in skies. But I'm not seeing that occurring here. So we're just going to move right on. Now, as I said, um, most pictures that you use this on, the target area is more the highlights than it is the shadows, but occasionally you get an exception. Like here, we're going to have one from the book. This is, um, this is figure 1011, and it's a scene in Iceland. Um, well, enhancing the highlights, making the clouds better, is a nice objective. But I think the real focus of the picture is here in the foreground. So we can run the bigger hammer action, and we get this. Interesting effect. Definitely stronger clouds, in my opinion, too strong but you can see how much detail it's adding to the uh, foreground rocks. If we want more than that, we could tur turn the darkening layer off. Okay, so just run the overlay in its, in its uh, full glory here. There's before, there's after. Now, the way I see this is more or less the reverse of the glacier picture, in that I'm now happy with what's going on here in the foreground, and I kind of like what's going on in the background, but I feel that it's too much. So I'm just going to do something to reverse the effect somewhat. Instead of using overlay mode, I'm going to shift this to soft light mode, which is a, a more, more appropriate way of enhancing shadows. Um, it, it, it doesn't enhance highlights quite as much, and it gets a little bit more of a natural look here in the shadows. So let's see what we've got. There's the original. There's this way, and there's the overlay method. Definitely, I prefer soft light so far. Now, you remember that by default, you get a layer that protects the picture from darkening. That's the opposite of what we want here. We want a picture that prevents the picture from, 
are we? We want to have a lightning layer here rather than a darkening layer. We are not worried about the picture getting too light. We are worried about it getting too dark in the foreground. So this one, instead of darker color mode, now becomes lighter color mode. And you see that by having it there, I'm suppressing what's going on in the clouds without eliminating it altogether. There's before, there's after. So you can see that this action is, act, is really doing something good to the clouds, but most of it is, is, is working on the foreground. And of course, as with the previous version, you can use whatever opacity you like. See, that eliminates anything going on in the clouds. That allows a whole lot to go on in the clouds, and you can put it in the middle wherever you like. Here again, in this picture, we don't seem to have any sort of problem with blurring, which is not too surprising, because in order for blurring to occur, I mean for haloing to occur, um, there has to be a pretty long border between one object that's, uh, that's much darker than the other and one object that is very smooth. Has to be big, has to be long, has to be a big contrast, has to have an absence of texture on one side. That doesn't happen all that frequently. Where it does happen frequently is a sky, where it intersects a much darker background, um, or occasionally a much lighter background. Um, because a sky is usually quite smooth, and the smooth sky has nothing to disguise the halo. Now here in this picture, we would potentially have a problem right about here if there weren't clouds in the sky. But there are clouds in the sky, and they have a texture, and that disguises um, anything that the viewer would recognize as being a halo. So no problem here. But again, if this were a clear blue sky, probably there would be a problem. Okay, now the next picture does show that. Okay, this is the Bridge of Size in Venice. Um, it uh, cries out for the bigger hammer action just as much as the glacier picture did because everything that's of interest here is in the highlight area. So we really want to get more detail here in the bridge itself, and it would be nice to get more detail in, in the light or in the left hand building as well, plus the dark side, the, the right hand building, is somewhat in shadow, and it would be nice to lighten that a little bit. So in principle, the bigger hammer is going to work very well here. But we may run into some problems because we have this smooth blue sky, and it's butting against um, objects that are much lighter or much darker than it. Here, the, the bridge is much darker than the sky that's butting it, so this may result in a light halo underneath. Um, it will have the opposite effect here because the sky is darker than the bridge and so up here we may have a darker halo. We'll find out. Here's the uh, bigger hammer action and at first glance this is great. We're getting a nice result here. Turn this off. Yeah, definitely more detail in the white marble. We'll probably have to set a highlight later, uh, but in principle it's, it, it's going very well. This darkening layer should probably be right about at its default because we're, we're getting um, some nice more detail on the right hand the building, the, uh, the one that's a little bit too dark to begin with, and this is really fixing it. The, and even the gondolier is happier, but he's not going to charge us any less money, unfortunately. Um, but Let's take a look at these uh, possible halos. In here, well, there's, there's a slight change in the sky here. We're getting a little bit darker sky here, not so much of a, of a really obvious halo underneath the bridge. I mean, we, we can look at it, but I don't think it's that serious. So I would tend to leave that alone. How about the darker halo that we'd be afraid of on top? Yeah, something is definitely happening to make the, the, the sky darker up here. Now, what can we do about that? Here's the unblurred layer. This is, um, would be what would happen if this overlay here were not blurred at all. So, the sky is fine. Everything else is all screwed up. Um, we don't get nearly the detail here in the, um, in the light area that we want to, but we could use that to restore the sky. Now, there's an easy way and a hard way to do that. Um, the hard way, in my opinion, is to do this. 
I'm going to option click and add a layer mask to, uh, to the layer. This layer mask, because I option clicked, is black by default. And because it's black, you can't see this unblurred layer anymore. But I'm going to paint whiteness into it. Come over here, make white my foreground color, and I'll just paint right into it like that, thus eliminating the halo. And this is a big enough brush that I can do that. Um, maybe go even a little bit further, like so. And probably I'll have to reduce opacity a little bit, but even this, it's hard to see. There's before, there's after. Maybe cut down the opacity just here. Um, and that, to my way of thinking, gets rid of the problem. The easier, lazier, and probably better way of doing it is this. Uh, let's delete this layer mask altogether. Now we have an unblurred layer, and I'm going to flatten the rest of the picture. So Shift Command E, merge visible. Now we have one thing where everything is good except that we have the halos, and then this where we have good skies but uh, bad nothing else, but bad everything else. Yeah, there's the unblurred layer. There's the correctly blurred one. Okay, again, this one has poor detail in the bridge, but nice skies. The one underneath it has um, much better detail in the marble and in the water everywhere, except it has this sky haloing problem. Now, when this haloing problem occurs, it almost always is in a sky. Um, and you can almost always eliminate this in the following way. I'm going to take the file into LAB. And I'm doing this unflattened in order to make use of blend if, because I can just exclude every part of this top layer that isn't blue. Ordinarily, skies are the only thing in pictures that are blue. And watch how this works. I'm going to double click here to bring up the um, the blend if options, and I'm going to say in the B channel, which is yellow versus blue, I don't want to use this top layer unless it's blue. So I start sweeping this over, and as I do, you'll notice that I'm recovering the rest of the picture. I have to go this far before I start to get the halo. So I can drop the slider right about here, then I option click on it to split it this probably won't make any difference here, but in principle it makes for a smoother transition. And we have that. Okay, so that should restore the sky from the unblurred layer without losing the building like this. So that's before I did the blend if, and there's after. Now, did this work? Here's before with the halos, and here's after. Now, there are a couple of questions here. The sky seems to be, to be better. And I mentioned that ordinarily skies are the only blue things in the picture. Um, the, but here that's not the case because the part of the gondola is, is, is blue and we have these other blue objects as well. So the question is, are these other blue objects forgetting the sky, are they better like this or are they better like this? If you like it like this, then you haven't got any problem. Okay, the, the picture is ready. If you want to restore them to this without changing the sky, that's easy enough to do. Just go up here, add a layer mask, um, make a very loose selection with the lasso like that, and fill that with um, black. And that will block out the effect of the unblurred layer. And there you go. That was before and that was after, if that's the, the effect that you were trying to get. So this covers the basic uses of the bigger hammer action. Uh, I remind you that there are many options within the bigger hammer uh, panel that allow you to customize this a little bit further, but this gets you started.